Why am I wearing a jacket? So a lot of these vlogging guys are going to Sony cameras, but they're they're buying these. The Sony still makes a camera that is it's a a real camcorder. The old camcorder side the side the, the the screen pops out the side and you can flip it around that kind of thing. I've got an old Toshiba in that configuration, but it's not a real high quality camera. But they're all going to these four hundred dollar Sony's to video with now, getting away from these little Canon quick shot cameras. Like I understand why. I mean these these Canons were pretty cool back in the day when they were the only ones who figured out that you needed you need a wide angle lens to do the job. I mean, everybody's figured that out now though, so, uh, you know, there's no secret to that. The main thing you need is a wide angle lens on these little cameras and some sort of decent audio that doesn't pick up a lot of wind noise. Well, Canon still hasn't figured out the wind noise thing, but a lot of the other manufacturers have. <clears throat> I'm not buying a $400 Sony camera. I'm just not doing it. I'm not going that expensive route so sorry I, I don't make I don't make money off this vlog so I'm just not gonna do it <laughs> the, uh, if there was money there even if this thing just paid for itself I'd, I'd consider it but, but no uh, I, there's too many headaches on YouTube for trying to make money on your content so the wife and I are heading to the dealership to get the oil changed in the car uh, and I want to look at the brakes because what I got going on here is kind of kind of scary. Now I'm looking at this. Hold on. I'm looking at this, going, "Holy crap! Look at all this stuff all over the wheels." I'm like, "Weren't those a different color when we bought them?" Oh yeah, they were a different color when we bought them. That's brake dust. My wife drives like a maniac. Now you can see I already already did one little stripe here. Uh, <clears throat> my wife, a little, little heavy on the on the gas, a little heavy on the throttle, and uh, you can do that in a car and get away with it. But I'm looking at the brake dust on these on these wheels, and this is like the first oil change, and it's like every 6,500 miles in this car, and it's the first oil change, and we're going in to have it looked at. Don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm like, shit! Look at the, you know, the dust on these these wheels, especially the front. It's like, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm sure some of it's road gone, but you know, you can't drive you can't drive a, a SUV like a car. They weigh too much. This thing has a 2.5 liter engine. It's a Rav4. It has a 2.5 liter engine, and it's actually got a lot of pickup for what it is. I mean, the car we came from was a Corolla. It had a 1.3 liter engine, or one point, maybe it was 1.8 uh, liter engine. I don't remember. No, it had to be a 1.8. But anyway, uh, this one has a 2.5 liter engine. In it. You pop the hood, and it looks like it's got a you know little little tiny engine in it, because these things are meant for uh, that or that or a V6 if you want the want the tow kit. Natalie was kind of like, oh, I wish we got the tow kit. I'm sitting there thinking, when's the last time we towed anything? You know, you can't tow, you can't tow anything with this one, this model, the four banger. Basically, they said the tow capacity is 1,000 pounds, which means don't tow anything with it. And uh, even with the six cylinder, I think it's only like, it's not even 5,000 pounds. I don't think with with the with the tow kit, which is again like saying don't tow anything with it. And it's like, well, we bought this. I. I basically wanted this vehicle because it got better fuel economy. For an SUV, this gets pretty decent fuel economy. <clears throat> the last time we did the math, it got like 22 plus miles a gallon, the way she drives. So, I don't know. Uh, it's all in town driving. We don't take it anywhere except just up and down West Time, which is like the worst fuel economy you can get. So, it's not too bad. The gas prices are low right now, but, you know. Low gas prices. I mean, you know, when the when the physical price of gasoline is low, it's a perfect time to raise taxes, right? <laughs> well, we took the car in, and it turns out they don't do oil changes every 6,500 miles 
or every five, it says between 5,000 and 6,500 in the manual, but because they're using, they're using high tech synthetic or whatever, they, they only do that every 10,000 miles. And I got online and looked around and that's, you know, with modern engines, that's what a lot of new cars say and it's, they don't seem to have a problem with it. So we went in today uh, to the car dealership and they took the car in and like, well, yeah, but you know, since you're not here for the, the, the maximum number of miles, we'll rotate your tires because, you know, why not? Well, you know, what are you going to do? So uh, it was parked in here like this earlier today. And that's the tire. I, that's the, the wheel position that I put the fingerprints on. And sure enough, uh, the fingerprints are now on this wheel. I don't know. I can't tell if it's coming on a camera or not, but yeah, they're there and there and there. So they did actually, hold on, so I don't blind myself. They did actually rotate the tire, so I'll give them that. But we sat there for two hours and no oil change. <laughs> and uh, they had this funky coffee machine. And I want, it was never, it was a, it's like a Keurig, you know, it's not, it's, it's like one of the standard um, prepackaged little packages. And I'm sitting there trying to read the instructions because it's got a little piece of paper sitting there and it has the instructions on it and it's got pictures and everything. So I'm sitting there with my magnifying glass in and I'm sitting there trying to read these instructions. And this cowboy guy walks up and says, you need some help? It's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to get the little lip open. It, okay, it opens up somehow. And I'm looking at it and, I'm, and I didn't realize that the light on the front of it is also the open button. <clears throat> but so you grab the little, the little packet and it's a flat packet, not a cup. That's one of the big complaints about the Keurig K cups is they're not they don't collapse in the landfills, so they take up all the space. Well, this the, this design is just a flat package, uh, and I, like I said, I was, I was going to walk over there and film myself getting a second cup of coffee, but it, it was never empty. There was always somebody there, and I didn't want to I didn't want to walk up and video myself in front, you know in front of a bunch of people. I was going to set up the you know the because I had all my camera equipment with me. Because I'm not going to leave it in the car while well, it's going for oil change. It's too, it's just too, I'm too paranoid for that. But the one thing we need to do with this car. Oh, well, yeah, the reason you have the package is because you can suck the air out of it and it flattens it out. And you can throw a hundred of them away in a hand. Whereas with a Keurig, I mean, you're taking up a barrel with a hundred of those things. You're taking up the space of the barrel would take. So, uh, you know, I don't know. The, the coffee maker we have, I've been pretty happy with it. But if, when we go to replace it. There's other there's other options out there, and I'm just trying to I'm just you know wondering what to do about it because uh, there's a million options for that Keurig design of the K cups, and uh, they dropped the idea. They lost. I read somewhere that K, that uh, Keurig lost 25% of their market when they decided they were going to do you can only use you can only use Keurig you know a Keurig signed K cups on our devices. And all of a sudden, poof, there goes 25% of their share. And it's like, uh, okay, never mind. Uh, we won't do that. <laughs> People stop buying their damn products. That's how you get things changed with products. People bitch and moan about... I remember there was a lawsuit. <clears throat> all right, ready? So I remember with Warcraft Online or Warcraft uh, game, one of the early versions of those software, the, multi, the massively multiplayer games, People sued the company because they were they were playing the game. And it was so bad that they were saying it was hard to play. And they they couldn't get they couldn't get uh, into the system and play the game consistently. And they they were at a disadvantage, you know, to players who had a good server somewhere. And the lawyer and the the, the judge is like, yeah, but you're still playing the game. Uh, you know, if, if, the thing is, the the company offered them their money back. So look, we'll, we'll give anybody their money back. All you have to do is say that you had trouble playing the game. We'll give you your money back. And you can just go, we can just go our separate ways and you can wait till we figure it all out. And the judge is like, yeah, but they offered you your money back. You're still playing the game. So the judge threw it out. You know, if you're still playing the game, then you're obviously still satisfied. You're obviously still capable of playing the game. If it's not good enough for you, then, you know, stop playing it. Wait until they have something that is worth playing. Well, of course, you know, it, it took them a couple of years, but they got the, they got most of the bugs worked out. Today, you can play massively multiplayer games if you really want to. It doesn't seem like anybody is. It seems like uh, it, it seems like that whole multiplayer thing kind of went to the background. 
it's just it just is part of a lot of games and and you can either play single player you can play massively you can play multiplayer massively multiplayer it just depends on the game but you know i've gotten so far out of games these days i haven't played games in a long time because i don't know uh they've got the the resolution of the monitors got better and the resolution of my eyes didn't so i'm legally blind so i can't play a lot of those games i can't keep up with it but anyway that's another video uh so yeah kind of a waste of time getting the tires rotated on in the car i think you know I, I can't imagine you know they want to rotate the tires if you're 6500 miles or whatever to, so they just did something to make us feel better <laughs> but uh they, yeah they went straight back so that's just kind of odd to me i don't know uh i mean it's just the way these tires i know some tires you're supposed to you're supposed to crisscross them when you sorry i'm, I'm aiming at the wrong place you're supposed to crisscross my arms getting tired i got the, i got the light on here too about a 10 pound light uh and with some tires you're just supposed to go straight back they're not you're not supposed to change the direction of highway speed rotation so i don't know i, I, I don't remember how that works i i am not a car guy 